back to another election edition of Meet Victoria with Caleb Shaw. We are powered by Thrive Fuel Digital Marketing. So let's just jump right into this, guys. We've got a U.S. Congress District 27 race, and we've got one of the candidates here. My friend, if you wouldn't mind, please introduce yourself. Hey, my name's Andrew Alvarez, uh, born and raised right here in Victoria, Texas, graduated VHS 1998. Nice. I was one of the drummers. Well, actually, I played like this, so. Well, you, uh, I would not be out there playing with you because I have no rhythm, and I am overly white, and they don't let me anywhere near musical, <laughs> musical instruments because nice. I will make everybody run. And so what in the world made you decide, hey, I'm going to run for Congress? That's a, that's a big office. That's a big seat. What the heck made you make up, wake up one day and just decide to jump in? It's a big David and Goliath ch uh, seat. But um, I actually made the choice three years ago, and I knew I wanted to run because people – that were working class like myself mm -hmm. we went to work and that's all we did and then we lived with what happened not enough of us stood, stood there and stood up for ourselves so i decided three years ago hey you know it's me i got to make that choice i got to be that voice and that's what got me started yeah and that's you know that in itself is the political process is is can be ugly you mm -hmm. know and it, it can it can be exhaustive and, and it's a real toll on this because the second you pop your head out and say hey i think i want to help and i want to try to give back to my community. Everybody attacks and oh, it's yeah. like, oh, you're terrible and ah, you know, and all this. And, and that's one of the things that I, I just have a respect for all candidates that run because it's mm -hmm. such an intrusion into your life and your world and your family and all this kind of stuff. But I think it's needed, you know, and, and as we've seen politics, everybody, oh, I'm not into politics. I don't want to mm -hmm. talk. Well, they're into you and, and politics encroach in just about every aspect of your life now. You can't even turn on a football game anymore without getting politics Correct. thrown at us, you know, and so, um, what do you see as the role of a District 27 congressman? You know, what What do you see as, and, and again, when I say that, I know you are not elected yet. Mm -hmm. So I know that, you know, right now you're on the outside of the fence, looking in, trying to make your best assessments. And so I don't expect you to say, well, you know, cla you know, all this intel that you get from that side. But coming from an outside point of view, looking to run, you know, what, are you, what do you see as the role of a, of a congressman? The biggest role as a congressman is to represent their district. Where I would um, be a little bit different is my job right now takes me all over the country. So I'm not ignorant to the fact that though I represent my district, meeting my district needs and wants, what I decide here it could and will have ramifications in California, in New York, in Florida. And I see those people, but my main focus is right here and I've got a platform already that I can communicate with the people in 27. And they reach, they reach out to me, they, they text me, all sorts of matters like that, and I want to represent them, not only the individual people, because they are very important, but also small business owners. They need a voice, too. A lot of people don't, don't like to, to think of the word corporate, but corporations need a voice, too, because they directly hire the individual peoples. And I, you know, as, when I first got my career started, it was actually in this building. And... Um, I started as a regular entry-level employee, and I stood up to corporate people. Mm -hmm. As I progressed, you know, with, with what I do now, as a corporate per, uh, person, I now stand up for the, the working class people. So it, it's all a matter of checks and balances, who represents who, and providing what the people, the companies, and the entities here in this district need. At the same time, you know, you've got your standard buzzwords, border security, making sure the police, you know, all of those are big things, mm -hmm. big things. I think those are key and important. But my main focus are the people of the, of the district. Do you think there's a disconnect? Because a, a lot of times in elections, it, it starts that way. You know, hey, I'm for the people. Then they get to Washington and, and everything seems to change. And, and, you know, and I'm not talking, I'm not throwing names out or anything like that. I just mean as a general under the whole umbrella is a lot of times it's, hey, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and I'm for the people. And then they get to Washington and... Every, it doesn't seem like for, they, they almost forget where they came from. And again, I'm not speaking to anybody directly. Mm -hmm. I just mean under the broad umbrella of that seems to, to, to happen a lot. Where do you think, you know, why do you think that happens? I guess would be a good question. You know, do you think that people are overwhelmed with all the punt money and power in Washington? Or what do you think it is that kind of knocks people on their rear ends when they get there and they're like, holy smokes, this is a, a, a big train coming down the track. You yeah. Know? Well, going from talking to like an individual person in your everyday life to go into sitting in the seat of hundreds of dish of congressional members with somebody that has big huge power in the middle of the speaker of the house yeah that can be intimidating yeah uh, I, whenever I got started with this one thing I also started looking at was campaign strategies because I knew that my budget wasn't going to be big right. in fact uh, 
I'm all self-paid right now. No, I take that back. I think I have like $250 worth of donations from my family. Yes, sir. But um, campaign strategy books always said primaries, go for the, your party. Mm -hmm. Then the generals go for both. Right. And I see that. I've seen that everywhere. Look at the Houston. You know, I look at Houston because there's a lot of congressional districts in Houston alone. So I look at their strategy. It's the same thing. Everywhere. They're talking about, I'm going to be for, both, for the people and work with both sides. But I'm already working for both sides. Mm -hmm. And I have a podcast called The Latino Conservative. I have gotten the attention of our vice president. I got a cease and desist from her. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, well done, sir. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bank of America. Uh, something I see affecting people every day in the car business is a, a creditor will deny a loan because of an NSF fee. So I put out there, ban the NSF fees. I put that out December 27th, which is the day after my birthday, actually. Last week, Bank of America, they, they, they saw that. And then they put out, we're going to not have NSF fees. Nice. Uh, I'm already working for the people again because, you know, Fox and Friends, mm -hmm. they've recognized what I did. And they've had me on the show four times in the last year. And it's not just, again, not just I'm going to be just for Republican people or just for Democrats, even though I am Republican, I'm running the Republican primaries, but I'm still going to be for all people because all people have rights and needs. Have you encountered, uh, you know, I, I've seen what I think is, is uh, and I've noticed a lot of the politicians are catching a wind of a shifting demographics. And, you know, and I, I think, and, and don't hold my feet to the, to the fire on these numbers, but I think in prior elections, you know, like 78% of Latino voted Democrat and things like that. But those numbers seem to be shifting back. A lot of races and, and stuff are, are with Latinos and blacks are going more towards uh, the Republican side. And you've got the pendulum swinging mm -hmm. back. Have you, as a the Latino conservative, have you faced, you know, shocking off from both sides? Like, hey, man, what are you doing? You know, because I've had some buddies that are some of the most conservative people that I know. And, and, but yet they went out and they voted the opposite. And mm -hmm. when I got to talking to some of them, you know, it was, well, no, I'm Latino, so I vote Democrat. And I'm like, well, where do you stand on this, this, and this? And I'm like, you just gave the conservative talking points. And they're, no, 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 but I'm a Democrat. And, but I've seen it, and it's been all over the news lately, especially with Hispanics. If there's been a big swing back towards the right. And have you been seeing this as boots on the ground and having a podcast like that? Is, is that something you've seen as the changing demographics? I've seen that, and that's actually one of the uh, issues I talked with, talked with on Fox. And um, it's definitely what you said is exactly 100% right. My parents are diehard Democrats. Mm -hmm. uh, we would get into arguments all the time. Mijo, he's trying to build a wall. I know we're here, mom. <laughs> we're here, mom and dad. We're here, mom. You're indigenous. You're really here. Yeah. Dad's family, um, Alvarez, comes from the name son of Alvaro. Okay. He came over with Christopher Columbus. We are really here, but uh, you know, coming from somebody who's seen entire houses moved in McAllen mm -hmm. on the border, gone, so they can get away from you know the the the, uh, the cartels and such. Mm -hmm. Not trying to talk a buzzword. I'm sorry, but. Nah. Um, the people that I talked to when I was in McAllen, they were almost, uh, one, almost 100, seriously, almost 100% for a wall because it provided protection. And they know that the Republican president at the time, Donald Trump, was building a wall to protect them. Mm -hmm. And that's what it comes down to now, you know, Latinos, we want to do just a couple things. We want to raise our family right, and we want to go to work. That's, those are our two core beliefs, you know, and then of course, we have, we have church in there too, but um, we got to keep, make, make sure, you know, that they see that the conservative side is more towards keeping our family safe, which is one of my platforms, keep our family safe. And uh, the other one is keep Texas working. So um, and that's, that's really been just a standard view al along the entire way, was we get more chances to work. We don't have our jobs taken away. We get, keep our family safe. So yes, we want those conservatives beliefs because those lean towards those aspects. Gotcha. No, that makes sense. I'm going to run you through a few of the, and I, I hate to do it myself, but a few of the buzzword type things because mm -hmm. I, I just kind of want to know your overall, you don't have to dive deep into these, but um, I just want to get a few of these out before we go. What are your thoughts on mandates, specifically speaking to vaccine and, and mass mandates? For, against, uh, where, where do you lay on those? Against. Okay. I'm against the mandates. I understand some companies have the right mm -hmm. to require their employees to do that, um, but the government should not overreach on that. Got it, That's, got it. Um, 
inflation right now is at a 40 year high or, or even maybe higher. Um, we're filling in all aspects of life. You know, our, our dollars are worth less. You go to the store, everything costs more. Um, your savings, what you have in there today is, is worth less than it was last year. Mm -hmm. um, yet sometimes you turn on the news and we're told, no, no, this is, this is good. This, is, this inflation is a sign of a healthy market. I, just, I don't personally agree with that, but what are your thoughts, you know, right now on with the, all the inflation, you know, A, is it real? And is it good or bad? And, and what do we do about it? So I had a discussion with a gentleman in California, and I just got back from California where I paid nearly $5 a gallon of gas. And we've got more money in the economy right now. Absolutely, we do. But when you have more of something, like a baseball card, mm -hmm. when you have a 50 Babe Ruth cards, it's gonna be worth less than if you just had one Babe Ruth card. Same thing with the American dollar. And then what's another thing that's causing that inflation is we are borrowing money from countries like China, but then later on we're also saying China's bad. We need to, to, to mm -hmm. defeat them. So absolutely, I believe inflation is a real thing. It's hurting us to no extent right now. Um, it's taking away our future. Yeah, and, and man, I've, I've got a bunch of these, but we don't have a ton of time. So I, one of the, the, the big deals that's in the news right now is, you know, Texas and, and Washington don't seem to be on the same page. And the federal government doesn't like what we're doing down here in Texas, and there's a lot of conflict. Right now, the big thing for the president seems to be eliminating the filibuster and trying to pass these voting laws to federalize elections and, and get rid of the, the, the voting bills that, that Texas and other states have passed. That's a big deal to me, eliminating the filibuster. You know, I, th I feel like our whole system is set up as a series of checks and balances, mm -hmm. and it's made to, unless you can get through this stringent, tight, it, that's what our government, government is supposed to do is fight with each other and check each other and balance each other. And so the th thought of one side saying, hey, we can't get something through, so we want to change all the rules, that makes me really nervous. Where do you stand on that issue? Very scared and nervous as well. Uh, President Joe Biden, when he was a senator, he stood up for the filibuster. He advocated for not changing the rules. Every, just about every single Democratic uh, senator out there right now, Cory Booker, um, Chuck Schumer, all of them, back in 2018 and 2016, signed a letter, don't remove the filibuster. And it, it, is, it is a very scary thought because one thing that filibuster, see a senator actually I should say, doesn't represent people they represent the states, but what they also do is they give the minority a voice. Because mm -hmm. as it is right now, you've got the House that almost everything is down party lines. Yep. The Senate gets to actually deliberate and debate on items, you know, real intelligent. And I, I've got to give it to some of the Democrats. They come up with valid arguments. Mm -hmm. The Republicans come up with valid arguments and then they go figure out what they need to do. It's negotiations. You and I do negotiations all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you take that out. You're going to blow up the Senate. You're going to turn the Senate into the House. Everything's going to be down party line. And then an, an establishment that our forefathers established 250 years ago is just going to be gone. Mm -hmm. Minority, the minority uh, party is not going to have a voice. Not to, not to even think about the libertarians out there. Mm -hmm. That's another party people forget about. Mm -hmm. Where's their voice going to go? Right, right. My friend, I would love to continue down this because I, I think there's a lot to unpack there and a whole lot we can get into. But sadly, we're already out of, out of time. Um, if you wouldn't mind, for people that want to follow your campaign, if they want to donate, if they want to reach out and ask you questions or talk to you, I know you're easily accessible. You were super fast to answer all my response uh, questions. How can they find you and where's all your... How, how, Give them, blah, 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 like, give them all the good stuff, man. I can't spit it out, but hey. save me here. Make me look good. Hey, guys, if you want to reach out to me, my website's easy to remember. It's aaforcongress.com. I've got my social platforms on there. You can reach out to me. You can text me. I do reply to text. I reply to Facebook messages. If you look up Andrew Alvarez for Congress 2022, you'll find my Facebook page there. I post some silly stuff on Facebook, so don't, don't judge me on that. <laughs> you know, if you don't keep it light, though, and, and you can't be all business all the time, yeah. my friend. And so thank you so much for coming yes, on, brother. I really appreciate it. Um, anybody that runs, you have my respect, whether you win or lose. I, I appreciate you being out there. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks to Thrive Fuel Digital Marketing for powering us, and we will see you at the next one.